Hello and welcome to this lesson on one of the most basic of the quantitative concepts on the GMAT exam, fractions and decimals, or our non-integers. So let's start by just defining what a fraction is. And of course, that's a numerator over a denominator. And to evaluate fractions, you're basically looking at a rational value wherein the numerator is being divided by the denominator. So a rational value technically means something that can be expressed as a fraction. Now, for instance, 3 quarters of x means that you're dividing x by 4 and you're then counting three of those parts. So that's just functionally what a fraction is. Now, you can always use your greatest common factor to reduce a fraction to what is known as its least common denominator. So 4 eighths is going to be equal to 1 half because you can divide the fraction 4 eighths by 4 over 4 as 1 to produce 1 half because dividing by 1 produces the value itself and so 4 divided by 4 itself is 1. So that's how you can reduce your fractions is basically by canceling out. This is just the long definition of what you're truly doing when you cancel out fractions. Now. Continuing this along, we need to just consider the idea of taking fractions of a whole. And this is a really common thing that you'll need to do on the exam. And there's a really nice mental manipulation that you can do to simplify this. So let's just take that fraction of three quarters and consider three quarters of 120. Now, rather than multiplying this out, instead, first divide the whole by the denominator. So that means I'm just going to take 120 and divide it by four to reach a quotient of 30. Because 12 divided by 4 would be 3, and then just keep the 0. Then you want to multiply that quotient by your numerator. So I'm going to take that 30 and multiply it by 3 to determine that 90 is 3 quarters of 120. And this is just going to be the most efficient and simple, uh, simplified way to take fraction for any fractions of wholes. Now, let's talk about adding, subtracting, or comparing fractions. And we're going to do that by using something called the bow tie method. And we'll do it here for 2 fifths plus 3 sevenths. So in order to add, subtract, or compare fractions, you need what is known as a common denominator. And you want to first multiply your denominators from the fractions that you're adding to produce a common den denominator. In this case, you're going to have 5 times 7, which is 35. Then the reason this gets called the bow tie sometimes is you kind of end up with like a visual bow tie at the end of this. So you're going to cross multiply your numerators and we bring back in our two fifths and three sevenths to figure out what our new numerators are going to be when we have our fraction now out of the common denominator of 35. So we multiply up and over seven times two would get 14, five times three we get 15 and we're going to have 14 thirty fifths plus 15 thirty fifths. Then our last step is to just sum the numerators keeping the common denominator. So 14 35ths plus 15 35ths is going to be 29 35ths, which is what you get when you add 2 fifths to 3 sevenths. And this uh, method, the bow tie method, you could use to subtract as well and potentially compare non common, fra uh, common denominator fractions if you're asked to do so on the exam. So then we've got to talk about multiplying and dividing fractions. So you're going to just multiply straight across with fractions. It's the easiest operation to uh, accomplish. So 2 fifths times 3 sevenths using the same fractions. It's just going to be 6 30 fifths. Just multiply straight across. Keep your numerator and denominator separate and you'll be fine here. But division is going to require a little bit more uh, attention to detail. So you're going to divide left to right by multiplying the first fraction by the reciprocal of the second fraction. So let's consider 2 fifths divided by 3 sevenths. And your big fraction bar is going to be where you put your division and then your multiplication sign. So if we're considering 2 fifths being divided by 3 sevenths, we're going to rewrite that left to right just as 2 fifths times the reciprocal of 7 thirds. Then we just multiply straight across once again. So we're going to end up with 2 fifths times 7 thirds, which is going to be 14 fifteenths, which is what you get when you divide 2 fifths by 3 sevenths. Now, there are some common fraction to decimal conversions that you'll just want to memorize to deploy them when necessary on this exam. And it's really important to be um, non-integer ambidextrous on this test. So you need to know things like 1 half is just 0 0.5. 
Because whatever format your answer choices and the problem is in is how you're going to want to complete the problem. You don't want to have to convert everything, so you need to know how to convert everything. Because if my answer choices are in fractions, I'm going to stay in fractions. If my answer choices are in decimals, I'm probably going to stay in decimals. Then one third is going to be point zero or 0 0.333 repeating. That's what that bar over top means. It means that it never terminates that decimal. And two thirds is going to be 0 0.66 repeating all the way up to a seven because your last six rounds up to a seven. Again, just technical thing. Then we've got one quarter and three quarters. Those are going to be 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 respectively. Next, we've got one fifth, and I'm only listing one fifth as 0 0.2, but you should be able to extrapolate from one fifth all of the other fifths. So I know that two fifths is one fifth times two, so that's going to be 0 0.4. One fifth times four would be 0 0.8. So you can see that if we're looking at our fifths, we could just extrapolate whatever it may be by just multiplying as required. Now, our sixths, we've got one sixth, which is going to be 0 0.167 or exactly half of uh, 0 0.33 repeating. And that's going to be, again, with the bar non terminating decimal for one sixth. Five sixths is going to be two thirds plus one sixth, and that gets you up to 0 0.833 repeating. Again, one that you probably want to commit to memory, but you can also, again, extrapolate from other common fraction to decimal conversions. The eighths are going to be one eighth, which is 0 point, or 0 0.125, three eighths, 0 0.375, five eighths, which is 0 0.625, and seven eighths, which is 0 0.875. And you can see you're just adding 0 0.125 to one quarter, two quarters, or one half, or three quarters, respectively, to get those exact decimal values. Also note, one seventh isn't included here because one seventh isn't, it's a repeating decimal. But it's not a really clean one, so the exam doesn't generally use it. If you had to, you can always do a long-form fraction to decimal conversion that we'll talk about here in a moment. One-ninth is just going to be one-third of one-third, so that's going to be 0 0.11 repeating. And again, just like with one-fifth, you can extrapolate any of our ninths as a fraction to decimal pretty easily. For instance, seven-ninths is just going to be 0 0.1 repeating times seven, so that's just going to be 0 0.77777 repeating. So again, easy fraction to decimal conversion. And lastly, we've got one tenth, which is just 0 0.1. And of course, that is something that you also can just extrapolate. And this is literally the conversion point for fraction to decimals. So try to memorize these ones on the list. Again, like three fifths, three ninths, seven tenths, all of these should be easily uh, discernible from the information here. If you want to commit those to memory as well, you can, but you probably don't need to. So now that we've seen some of these common fraction and decimal conversions, let's consider actually manually converting a fraction to a decimal. Probably not something that you'll have to do all that frequently on the exam, but it's good to know how to in case of emergency. So let's just consider three elevenths. So numerator of three, denominator of 11. You're going to set up your long division with the decimal point. <clears throat> so we've got 11 going into 3.0. 11 goes into 30 two times. So we have our long division here, and that means that we've got to put a point to because 11 goes into 30 two times, so 11 itself goes into 3.0 point two times. So you just leave the decimal there now. But we still do everything else the same. So two times or point two times 11 means I'm basically subtracting out the 22, and then we bring down the the uh, the decimal. So now we've got point eight. Uh, 0 0.80 because you got to drop down the zero to see how many times 11 goes into that. 11, of course, is going to go into 80 or 0 0.8 seven times. Seven times 11, we subtract out the 77. That becomes a three, and then you've got to drop down the zero again. 11 goes into 30, once again, two times. And at this point, you want to recognize that I've got the same 30, and then it's going to be the same 80. You want to recognize the repeating pattern and say, okay, I'm just looking at three elevenths being 0.272 repeating. Again, not something that you should have to do all that frequently, but if your problem dictates it, you want to know how to. Now, lastly, we're going to talk about just decimals generally. And so we've got a sample uh, decimal value, and decimals generally aren't required uh, to evaluate as much as fractions because they're more time consuming, but you still need to know the places 
uh, of the integer of the integer side and the decimal side so that you can understand when they start talking about them. So that one before the comma, that's our thousands digit. And your digits, of course, are only from zero through nine. Then the four is our hundreds digit. So we've got 1,400. The zero is our tens digit. So I have zero tens in this, in this uh, numeric value. And then the five, even though it's often known as the ones, is really our units digit. Then after the decimal point, and if you're European, this is sometimes a comma, but since this is based in the United States, you've got a period here. Again, very much the same concepts, just one side of the Atlantic uses a comma, the other doesn't. And our two on the right side of that comma, or possibly a, uh, or <laughs> this decimal point, or possibly a comma, is going to be our tenths. So we have two tenths on the right hand side, and then we have four hundredths, and then we have nine thousandths. So if you wanted to write that 0.249 as a fraction, it would be 249 over 1000. So again, a conversion thing that you may need to be familiar with. And then for manipulating decimals, you really shouldn't find that many instances where you have to do manipulation of decimals. And in fact, we kind of want to avoid it wholesale if possible. So generally plan to multiply entire equations by a power of 10 to eliminate a decimal. So we've got an example here of 0.2x is equal to 4y. Just multiply the whole thing by 10 to discover that 2x is equal to 40y and then x is equal to 20y. It's just a lot easier than trying to deal with the decimal. Get rid of decimals first if you've got anything algebraically relating to decimals by multiplying by some power of 10. Alternatively, you can also use scientific notation to manipulate some decimal expressions. And you can see that here with 0 0.0009. I know that that's 0 0.0001 times 9, so I can actually rewrite that as 10 to the negative 4th times nine. And again, in certain instances, the exam kind of expects you to recognize that scientific notation may be a more efficient manner by which to evaluate your decimal expressions. So now that we've got the basics of fractions and decimals down, let's go over to the whiteboard and take a look at some example problems similar to what you can expect on the GMAT. Here we are on the whiteboard and we've got a sample problem solving question involving comparison of fractions. So we talked about that bow tie method and here you're going to see it in a more kind of native format. So let's begin by just setting up our scratch pad as we always do. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, and we're just looking for the greatest equals question mark. And we've got two thirds, three fifths, five sevenths, nine thirteenths, and 11 seventeenths. So the way in which you want to compare these things is first, I can probably estimate away any common, um, any common fraction to decimal. So we just talked about how we probably need to know A and B as just fraction to decimal. So this one I already know is going to be 0.667. And this one is one fifth times three. One fifth was 0 0.2 times three is going to be just 0 0.6. So I can immediately say, well, B is out. It's not in consideration anymore because now I just have to compare two thirds against five, seven, nine, thirteenths and 11 seventeenths values that I probably don't have memorized, nor really should you. So then <clears throat> from the bow tie, we're just going to do two thirds versus five sevenths. And we do that by getting a common denominator. So that means here we're going to have a common denominator of 21 because we just multiply the bottoms against each other. Then we just have to go up and over to determine what the new numerators would be. So 2 thirds is going to be 14 21sts and 5 sevenths is 15 21sts. And this means that just ever so barely C is greater than a. So A is now out of contention. So then we're just going to keep on doing our verses against the other options. So we've got 5 sevenths versus 9 thirteenths here. And so again, we can do the little bow tie. So we first have to get our common denominator. So 13 times 7, the easiest way to do this is just do 7 times 10, 
which is 70, plus 7 times 3, which is 21, so we've got 91 as our common denominator here. <laughs> then 13 times 5 is going to be 65, and 7 times 9 is 63. So again, incredibly close. You're not going to be able to logically estimate this, but it just so happens that 5 sevenths keeps the win, and so D is out. And then the last one we've got to test is going to be the 5 sevenths versus the 11 seventeenths. So once again, we just set up our little bow tie, knowing we're going to get our common denominator and then multiply up and over. So we've got to get our common denominator of 17 and 7. So 7 times 10 is going to be, again, 70. 70 plus 49, or 70 plus 50 minus 1, is going to be 119. So we've got a new denominator of 119 underneath. We still know that, well, actually, 17 times 5 is going to be 170 divided by 2, which is 85. And then 7 times 11 is just 77. And we can confidently select at this point that choice C is the correct answer because everything else through the bow tie comparison method is deemed to be less than five sevenths. So go ahead on your own and practice some quantitative fraction and decimal problems as well as consider using mathaids.com for manual fraction and decimal calculation practice. Because remember, you have no calculator on this exam. So it's incumbent upon you to make sure that you truly do become math ambidextrous here and are able to uh, mentally process operations for both fractions and decimals with equal ability so that you're not wasting time on this test, needlessly converting from one non-integer format to another. Good luck.